Well, last spring, Elms College in Chicopee dedicated a new lecture series to a beloved and respected diocesan priest. Steve Kiltonic has more now on the inaugural speaker, a native of Springfield who was nationally recognized for her research on the Catholic Church in America. On April 24th, before a packed Veritas Auditorium audience at the College of Our Lady of the Elms, Sister Mary Johnson, a sister of Notre Dame du Namur, gave the inaugural talk the Father Hugh Crean Distinguished Lecture Series. Father Crean, who passed away in 2015, was a respected pastor, theologian, and a professor of religious studies at the Elms. On display outside the hall were Father Crean's memorabilia from his six-year tenure at the Elms. Friends, supporters, and philanthropists of the college wanted to honor Father Crean's memory and his contributions to the diocese, the greater western Massachusetts community, as well as the Elms. At the same time, the college wanted to also share with the diocese um, our effort to honor the Catholic intellectual tradition, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis here. Those two ideas came together perfectly. Each spring, a national leader in theology, ethics, or philosophy will lecture on the Catholic intellectual tradition and a topic of interest to the church and Father Crean. Crean's cousin, Jack Dill, led the philanthropic effort to establish the series. His time here was indeed very important to him, allowing him to exercise his considerable intellectual and theological self as he gave so much of his energy, care, and human kindness to his role as a simple priest, which was truly his only ambition. Sister Mary Jensen is perfect because not only did she know uh, Father Hugh Crean, not only did she grow up around here, but she knows topics, and the topic that she chose today is one that was close to Father Hugh Crean's heart, the role of women in the church. Sister Johnson was born in Springfield and raised at Sacred Heart Parish. She attended Sacred Heart Grammar School and Notre Dame High School and was taught by the Sisters of Notre Dame. She was in the seventh grade when Father Crean became co-pastor of Sacred Heart with Father George Farland. Sister Johnson received a B.A. in Sociology from Emmanuel College before entering the Sisters of Notre Dame congregation in Boston. After teaching high school, she attended UMass Amherst for her master's and Ph.D. in Sociology. She taught for 19 years at Emmanuel and now is a distinguished professor of Sociology and Religious Studies at Trinity Washington University. As a young girl, Sister Johnson was influenced by Father Crean. He was not ideological. He was dialogical. So he wasn't trapped in one way to look at reality, or he wasn't afraid of reality. He was open, he was honest, he searched for the truth, he dialogued with all kinds of people and all kinds of ideas, and so he really was a man of his time. The topic she chose for the lecture was Catholic Women in the United States, Values and Vision. Father Crean had many values out of which he lived, and one of them was a commitment to women in ministry. He really appreciated the gifts and talents of women, and he expressed that on numerous occasions. Before her talk, Sister Johnson spoke on the major points of her discussion, in particular, the changing role of women in the Catholic Church. At recent gatherings of young lay people, bishops, and cardinals, she witnessed a consensus that includes assigning women more roles in the decision-making processes of the Church from the local parishes up to the Vatican. We know from surveys that women do a lot of the tasks of parish and diocesan work. They build up the church in so many ways. They pass on the faith in family life in so many ways. But they're not involved in the decisions that animate and guide the church. Sister Johnson said at the parish level, women are already serving in leadership roles. She referred to statistics that show of the 32,000 lay pastoral ministers in the U.S., 80 percent are women. Because fewer priests are being ordained, more lay women and women religious are today leading priestless parishes, a conscious decision dioceses are making in an effort not to close parishes. Most of the priests who've been interviewed in studies are delighted with the leadership of the women. Some of them are outstanding administrators. They free up the priests to do the sacramental work. So we will see more and more what we're calling 517.2 parishes. That's the code in the Code of Canon Law that allows for the leadership of women and laymen and deacons to lead priestless parishes. In an Extension Magazine cover story, the transformative role of women in building the church was celebrated, citing the feminine genius, 
the idea that women possess unique and powerful abilities to teach about the faith, to lead, and to transform our church. Featured were women across the country in various occupations who are taking on new leadership roles, including those in diocesan management as chief financial officers and school superintendents. In 1995, Pope John Paul II said the life of the church in the third millennium will prominently feature the feminine genius. Pope Francis commissioned an international group to study the restoration of the female diaconate. They spent two years looking at the evidence and then writing a report. That report is now on his desk. Sister Johnson referenced a study that shows U.S. Catholic women hope the diaconate will be open to women, which would allow them to preach and administer some sacraments. These are the talks now. This is the new place where we are. Many, many people beginning to look at the structures of decision-making in the church, issues of governance and authority in the church, issues of new roles and models for the laity in decision-making, particularly women, and models of service. Sister Johnson has co-authored three books, one on young adult Catholics and the other two on diversity and the migration of Catholic sisters. Many Catholics are looking for solutions. They want transformation. They want renewal. They want a revitalization of the church. They want a reform. Going back to Father Crean's wonderful example, there's nothing to fear about facing reality. There's nothing to fear about searching for the truth. We believe in God. It's God's church. Wonderful things have the potential to happen if we don't fear. Sister Johnson also responded to prepared questions from the audience. Another question is when? When, when will all this happen? Ask the Holy Spirit. I don't know. I don't know the answer. In addition, Sister Johnson received a glass plaque from President Dume as a token of the college's appreciation for her lecture. For Real to Real, I'm Steve Kiltonic.